Hello viewers, thanks for joining us for another episode of Centrally Speaking. We hope you have been learning about the work and function of Jamaica's Central Bank, Bank of Jamaica. If you are new to the show, Centrally Speaking is all about explaining matters of economics and finance, matters of national importance that have an impact on your everyday life. On today's show, Odin White, Chief Risk Officer at Bank of Jamaica, will explain the importance of risk management. Anna, what do you consider to be a risk? Red flag. Red flag. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't want centrally speaking, red, red flag. <laughs> if you don't save for the future, girl, red flag. All right. So with that, we're going to hear a lot more about what risk management is right after we check in with the streets. When it comes to your money, what kind of risks do you try to avoid? When it comes down to my money, I don't really do any unnecessary spending. So whatever is important, like bills and food, that is what I mostly do. I don't do any extra investing or, you know, just to try to consume as much as I can and save so that, you know, I can have something put down for a rainy day. I avoid gambling. I invest my money, but not gamble. I would like to spend my money and take risks with my money in business that I know I can get a good rollover concerning profit. Business that I know that are profitable. I look at certain business such as, you know, the supermarket industry. That's a good, that's a good business because when you have natural disasters, you can really benefit from a business like that. So when it comes to my money, I want to spend and make sure that when I'm spending, I get a good profit, good earnings. Honestly, to be financially wise, I think you have to take some risks sometimes. Um, especially business-wise, even in the pandemic right now, you have to take risks, you know, because a lot of people losing them job. Look and see how you can help somebody, how can I benefit somebody and make some money right there, so, because you can go online, enough people they home, get something to do online. You know, a lot of people are home and they are doing podcasts and Zoom link. Say, hey, I will transcribe your Zoom meeting for you and make some money. So you can always take a risk. Investing, I don't take risks anymore because of COVID. I'm not coping very well because of COVID. Job is so hard to get and everything, so I'm not coping. I try to invest in something I can see. I can achieve something from. I try to invest myself, invest in something. I buy appliances and you know, sell back appliances, like sound system and you know, buy them and sell them back. Honestly, boy, I'm not really too take risks you know, because you know. My little chums can go down the drain so. You know, you know, yeah, the people in the streets always have the good things to say. Glad to know what they think about risk management. But before we join our special guest, let's get in a good word from Bank of Jamaica. You know, this inflation thing is a really big deal. It affects everything. Inflation determines what your money can do. So whether you're running the government, running a business, or running your household, you can't plan properly or plan for long unless inflation is low, stable, and predictable. We need a little inflation to encourage production and growth. But inflation is like your blood pressure. Can't be too high, can't be too low. Inflation is the real heartbeat of the economy. And investors feel secure. Welcome back to Centrally Speaking. Hi, I am Sheena. And I am Anna. It's time to meet a very special guest, the Chief Risk Officer at BOJ, Dean White. Adid, welcome to Centrally Speaking. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Yes. This is this is um, exciting. Yeah. Yes. I so love it's, it. It's your first time. Yes. Very first time. So we have this first time question that we mm -hmm. always ask. Tell us which school you're repping mm -hmm. and which parish. Which parish? Okay, so I'm from St. Catherine. Yes. Right. And the school that I'm repping is the St. Diego High School. Okay. The? The. Mm. Yes. <laughs> we, we, we recognize our full title. Okay. 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 Well, well, welcome. welcome. Well, and you. to everyone from St. Diego, welcome. <laughs> welcome, viewers. Tell us what is risk, or what is a risk, and what is the management of risk? In addition to being a red flag, mm -hmm. risk is anything that can go wrong. Mm -hmm. 
And in simple terms, if you have uh, an event like this, yes. and the lights are on, everything is going as planned, mm -hmm. and then something happens, we have a power cut, mm -hmm. we have an earthquake, whatever, that is an event. That's right. a risk event. Mm -hmm. okay. And the management of that risk event is to put in place measures or things that can help to cushion the impact or the likelihood of that event taking place. We're celebrating Global Risk Awareness Week. Right. Yes. <laughs> and this, this is such a timing. The, the timing is perfect for right. this because all around the world, yeah. organizations like Bank of Jamaica, we are looking to improve the awareness of risk mm -hmm. amongst our employees and stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And we're also looking to improve the way that we make decisions mm -hmm. and to include risk management as a part of those discussions. So it's, uh, as I said, the timing is perfect and Bank of Jamaica actually is in the middle of our Risk Awareness Week okay, as we speak. Okay. What are some of the risks inherent in central banking or to Bank of Jamaica and how do you mitigate or manage those risks? Okay, so as a Chief Risk Officer, my job is to understand our business. Mm -hmm. And our business is, of course, to maintain price and financial stability. Right. But there are so many other moving parts that help to make that a possibility. Mm -hmm. So we have our currency department, for example, right. that, you know, Issues provides and redeems, currency. redeems currencies. Mm -hmm. And we have a risk in that area called counterfeit, counterfeit okay. money. Okay. So unscrupulous persons have the ability to counterfeit or produce counterfeit notes mm -hmm. yeah. and one of the things that we have in the bank in the currency department is controls right. to ensure that the money that we are generating and redeeming right. is above um, reproach so for example we have certain and I don't want to speak out of turn for my colleague who is responsible for that area but we have certain thresholds that the currencies that we redeem right. have to pass right. and those thresholds and those conditions are what make risk management in that area very important. All right, so, so in, in other words, you try to manage the, the possibility that our banknotes can be counterfeited. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, okay. Absolutely. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. And another risk in that area, as um, you mentioned, it, we're coming up on Christmas. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. a lot of people have increased demand for, for cash. Yes. yes. So before Christmas, the currency department will do their analysis and will ensure that based on the demand for currency, typically associated with the Christmas season, that enough funds or enough notes and coins are issued right. in advance so that persons, or banks rather, don't have a shortage of currencies during this time of the year. All right, so, so risk itself sounds very multifaceted. How do you keep abreast of all the changes in terms of the risk landscape? How do you keep aware of what's happening globally? One of the things that keeps me awake is to figure out <laughs> what can happen <laughs> next. Oh, gosh. You know, what is it that can happen that can cause Bank of Jamaica to not meet its obligations right. on a daily basis? Mm -hmm. So every day I come to work and I go in a room in my office and yes. I think about scenarios and situations that can occur. And some of them we know. Right, right. by analysis. But some of them, yeah, You're some right. of them we have seen over the years yes. and we've been able to put measures in place to control those. Right. Mm -hmm. But then there are other risks and especially with the pandemic right. that have emerged. Mm -hmm. And so what we have to do is to ensure that we have an ongoing assessment regime of the environment, what's happening in the economy, and how that translates into our operations. And if there are any threats to that happening or our or objectives not being met, then our job in the risk department is to put measures in place and put before senior management and the board recommendations that can manage and cushion the impact of those events. I'm glad you brought up the, the impact of the pandemic because of course this situation, this global situation has highlighted the need for risk management. So in the context of the central bank, you just told us one of the risks that you try to manage daily, the, the risk of counterfeiting. But BOJ as a regulator, how do you manage the risks there um, in, in the context of regulating the commercial banks and what they do? There's more digital transactions. How do you um, okay. Manager. All right. So Bank of Jamaica, being the regulator of deposit-taking institutions, we have a responsibility to put regulations in place to ensure that the banks are adhering to sound risk management practices. Right. So we have various best practices and standards right. that we as a country subscribe to, 
and by extension, the commercial banks should also prescribe to. And if you look on, say, any typical commercial bank, what are the risks that they face? Mm -hmm. Not being able to pay their bills as they fall due, not being really? able to... One bank. <laughs> believe it or they not. No money, and that's, that's, that's liquidity risk, <laughs> yeah, okay. right? Okay, all right. Yes. Um, so they have to make sure that they have enough cash on yes. hand yes. Right. to pay their, their obligations as they right. fall due. That's liquidity risk. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so Bank of Jamaica, understanding that there's liquidity risk in the system, right. we have to put in place a liquidity risk management framework mm -hmm. that enforces certain protocols for banks to follow right. to ensure that they can maintain their liquidity. All right. You have another one, capital. Yes. Right. Capital is the lifeblood of any commercial bank. Okay. Right. And so what we have to do, we have to ensure that we have a framework in place. We have a capital adequacy uh, framework in place. And by capital, you mean? Capital meaning the, the net worth mm -hmm. of an institution. Right. So you have your assets, right. you have your liabilities. Okay, good. Okay? So mm -hmm. the difference between those yeah. is your capital yeah, right. or your net worth. Mm -hmm. So we have a responsibility to put in place a framework around ensuring that banks maintain adequate capital. Mm -hmm. And capital gives customers and stakeholders confidence that the system is robust and can withstand shocks mm -hmm. like COVID, mm -hmm. like a hurricane, like you know, a crisis, global yes. financial crisis. And so Bank of Jamaica has a responsibility to ensure that we set the standard mm -hmm. for capital management okay. in the system. The global pandemic has created a lot of opportunities and also a lot of risks. Sure. Um, share with us how you navigate or how Bank of Jamaica has sought to navigate these risks, particularly within this unprecedented time. At the start of the pandemic, we had, for example, plans to enable persons to work remotely. Mm -hmm. Right. We actually started to have discussions. Mm -hmm. But of course, the pandemic expedited that. Yes, right. So we didn't have a choice. We had to put, go right into that mm -hmm. mode and we put in place a work from home policy mm -hmm. to allow maybe half of the bank mm -hmm. to date to be able to work from home. And we're going towards 75%. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's one of the opportunities right. because we believe that, and we've seen that people working from home have actually become more productive. Mm -hmm. And so that's a, that's a positive spin right. mm -hmm. that risk management plays. Right. On the downside, we understand as well that there has been a significant psychological impact right. on our staff. Mm -hmm. So it, it has also made us very proactive in putting in place certain measures to Such ensure as that wellness measures wellness, and so on. health and wellness. Right. So checking on well-being mm -hmm. and yes, so on of your team yes, members. Yes, improving the frequency of communication, right. looking at our strategic objectives mm -hmm. to see if you know, we have prioritized properly to minimize the pressure and the workload, mm -hmm. so to speak, on right. our staff. Mm -hmm. And we have a very hard working staff. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we understand that that's in co combination with the effects of the pandemic. Mm -hmm has a negative impact on our people. So that's yes. called people risk. Mm -hmm. right. So we manage the risk that our people can remain optimal and healthy. Yes. So we're balancing health and wellness mm -hmm. as well as productivity. So on that note of wellness and well-being, I, I've been reliably informed that Bank of Jamaica has also introduced you know, um, virtual exercise classes as well as sought to change their learning platform to more of a a virtual landscape. Yeah, online. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So there are yeah. a lot of things which have evolved as a result of. Absolutely. Okay. And, and that's, that's one of the things that risk management does. It yes. doesn't just focus on, okay, how do we prepare for something bad? Yes. Yeah. It focuses as well on, okay, how do we exploit a the bad situation to make it work to our advantage? Mm -hmm. Excellent. And the ultimate goal being to preserve shareholder value. Okay. All so right. that's the goal of risk management to preserve and protect. Or shareholder value. So, Odile, risk management, it's not a <laughs> sexy topic <laughs> by any no, it's means. Not. <laughs> <laughs> by any means, because it, it, it requires probably concentration. You know, how you, have, you have to be thinking about what you're doing and what are the risks inherent in what you're doing. But how does Bank of Jamaica maintain the health of um, its organization? You alluded to, to it just now, um, the people risk. But what are some of the other business risks and how um, does Bank of Jamaica um, ensure its health? And then what would you say to, to people in general um, who try to downplay the risks that are at stake? All right, let me start with the second question yeah. first, because this is kind of the motivation yeah. mm -hmm. for why I chose this career path. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you go back to the history, mm -hmm. we had a 
banking crisis in the mid-1990s. Yes, yes. Where the banking sector basically consolidated significantly. Banks failed and, right. and so on, went right. into bankruptcy and delinquency. Mm -hmm. Then fast forward to 2008, mm -hmm. when you had the global financial right. crisis. And those two events has caused massive fallout in the financial sector globally. globally. So when you talk about risk management and you say to yourself, well, hindsight is 2020, but if we had put in place certain risk management measures, then chances are the impact and the fallout from those two events alone mm -hmm. would have been much less. Mm -hmm. okay. And mm -hmm. so persons who think about risk management as just being an academic exercise, yes. right. it's actually a lifestyle. Right. Think yes. about your own context, your yes. family. Yeah, yeah. You, you buy insurance yes. for your car, yes. for your home, because right. you are anticipating that if something bad happens, yes. I need to have something to cushion the yes. impact. Okay, right. Think about exercising. Yeah. You try to keep fit and stay hydrated and eat properly mm -hmm. because of the health risks associated right. with not, with doing, not so. doing so. Right. And so I think people who don't play risk management mm -hmm. should look at the other side of it All right. and think about what could happen if we did not have these things in place. Mm -hmm. And that would underscore the importance of risk management. Right. In terms of Bank of Jamaica's health right. and, and, and the business risk. you know, mm -hmm. our business risk mm -hmm. and so on, we actually have a robust risk management framework in place. Right. And I'm not tooting my own horn here, but it has been, <laughs> it has been you know, we, we understand yeah, that right. as a central bank, we cannot afford to not have sound risk management practices right. in right. place. You're the head of the financial sector. We, we, we are mm -hmm. the example yeah. for the industry, right. okay? So over the years, we've built out our risk management pr framework and processes with that in mind. Mm -hmm. And one of them is to ensure that we have adequate resources, financial resources, to do monetary policy. And one of the metrics that we track is the policy solvency ratio. So the policy solvency ratio right. is the amount of resources that we need to have in place yeah. mm -hmm. to ensure that when we conduct open market operations, right. we are above a certain threshold. And resources, you mean money? Cash. Capital, Cash. capital, yes. right. In this case, yes. All right, and the open market operations are when you inject foreign currency into the it's, economy. It's it's when we manage the amount of Jamaica dollars right. mm -hmm. by selling securities to the primary dealers and commercial banks. Right. Okay. So that's what open market operations right. entails. Right. And so what we want is to ensure that there's adequate. Not too much, but not too little right. amount of money in the system. Right. And so that's what open market operations does. It regulates the amount of money in the system. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Adeen, uh, particularly within the context of the pandemic, it has brought into sharp focus the heavy reliance on IT. Um, what are some of the risks as a result of that? You want to share a little bit? Okay. So imagine for me, mm -hmm. for a minute, that you're at home working. And all of a sudden, your device becomes blank yes and you're fine that your data is now compromised you can't access your folders and what that does is put up a red flag mm -hmm. that something may have gone wrong right. in the transmission of data between Bank of Jamaica and your device at home mm -hmm. right. and so what we have found is that there has been a spike in the number of attempts by cyber criminals to penetrate the databases of organizations like Bank of Jamaica mm -hmm. And what we have put in place is a, is a cybersecurity framework, right. which entails training persons on how to be responsible using right. their devices at mm -hmm. home, yes. mm -hmm. not leaving the computer open, mm -hmm. not using unsafe Wi-Fi connections, right. and so forth. And also, our technology has improved in the sense that we have improved the security mechanisms mm -hmm. and firewalls and so on. And right. we have a whole department, the information security department dedicated to that activity. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how risk management comes into play is that we support and we work alongside our IT department mm -hmm. to ensure that our people are knowledgeable and aware right. of the threats mm -hmm. of cyber. Because we're the first line of defense. Because we are the, like, right. Right. Yeah, very good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And also mm -hmm. as a second line of defense, mm -hmm. which is right. my department, we also ensure that the policies and procedures in place are in keeping with best practices okay. to protect the bank's data and our network as a whole. Okay. And, and this transitions also to the wider financial sector because Absolutely. they also interface with BOJ through various systems, I, yes. I suspect. Okay. Yes. Right. So, 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 so what we do is also important and 
relates right. to what the system does, yes. the, the, the commercial, commercial banks and so on. Commercial banking system, right. Because if a cyber criminal can penetrate our system, yes. they could also have access to the commercial banks right. and vice oh, right. versa. Right. So we have to work with the sector yes. right. and ensure that they too have put in place protocols and controls mm -hmm. to protect their system. Okay. okay, so we're going to broaden the scope now from Bank of Jamaica to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. sure. um, tell us a little bit, do you think uh, that Jamaicans are more aware, risk aware? And if so, what, how do you think that will impact business operations as we go forward? Mm -hmm. Jamaicans are definitely more risk aware. Right. And if you listen to the media reports about the pandemic, about the number of you know, new cases on a daily basis, yeah. the positivity rate, mm -hmm. all these are metrics that are used to assess the threat level of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so persons are now familiar with those terms. And if it wasn't for the pandemic, probably they wouldn't know what a positivity rate is. Okay. So those are the <laughs> things well, that's that true. Right. those are right. the things that we have right. to benefit from. Yes. Persons are now appreciating that the Disaster Risk Management Act is not just a piece of law anymore. Right. It's a staple right. in yes. our well being to, to protect risk. us from right. COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. yes. And you know, persons who take it Lightly, mm -hmm. you can see that the state is very serious about penalizing persons who breach the protocols. Mm -hmm. and, and that's another indicator that mm -hmm. the state mm -hmm. as well is also more aware of risk. What would be your final word um, on risk management, you know, probably personally, professionally? Risk management is a way of life. Yeah. It is involving planning mm -hmm. and preparing for the uncertain and it also is about looking how we can exploit and take advantage of opportunities when those events do happen. And we're in the middle of the hurricane season and I just want to encourage everyone to maintain your vigilance, button down. If you hear about a storm coming, that's another way that we manage risk, right. button yes. down your Financial houses. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, and, and also if you are concerned about your own well-being, take some time to get a checkup or yes, yes. do some mm -hmm. activity that helps to sustain and maintain your yes. well-being. Right. So that's the most important asset that we have, our well-being. Right. Uh, you know, I mean, I mean this conversation on, on risk has spanned health, it has spanned wellness and well-being. It went straight to the financial sector. Yes, we looked at financial stability. Right. It is most Monetary policy. multifaceted. <laughs> yeah. It is. Yeah. Odin, thank you so much for joining us today. We've learned a lot from this discussion. Thank you for having me. All right. All right. Stay risk aware. And yes. now we know what the red flags are. Yes. <laughs> My daughter would say no red flags. No, no red flags. flags. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. That pretty much wraps up our discussion on risk management. You know, how to manage those red flags. We met today Odin White, BOJ's chief risk officer. Odin spoke about risk management and how it impacts businesses and individuals. Hope you found the program interesting. In a previous episode, we told you that one of the oldest forms of currencies was the cowrie shell. Let's take a look at other items used as currency. Rye stones are perhaps the most massive form of currency in history. They were used as currency on the island of Yap from around 500 AD. Each rye stone represented its own history, which determined its value. The more difficult it was to create and transport a stone, the greater its value was. It is hard to believe, but there are places across the Solomon Islands where dolphin's teeth are used as currency, even in our modern world. Another form of ancient money was arrowheads. They were useful in early societies as a means of trade for other goods. Italians love cheese. They love it so much that one of the Italian banks, Credito Emiliano, accepts Parmesan cheese as a form of payment. Since 1953, the regional bank has accepted a curious collateral for small business loans, giant wheels of Parmigiano Reganio cheese. After the First World War, Germany's economy was wrecked by the Treaty of Versailles and all that came with it. As such, inflation was out of control across the country, which led to some towns making their own banknotes out of wood. This currency was referred to as Notgeld, which literally translates as not gold. Whether you're a small farmer, street vendor, big investor, every entrepreneur, you got to wise up, wise up about your money. You have to make sure, say your money secure. When you need for grow, you have access to more. Financial inclusion means that individuals and businesses have access to useful and affordable financial products and services that meet their needs. Access to more money, more credit.
ready for whatever your business needs. When you work hard for your money, your money must work for you. Today we discuss risk management with Odin White, Chief Risk Officer at Bank of Jamaica. Now it's time for our Fast Facts. Number one, risk management is a process of identifying, analyzing, monitoring, controlling and reporting risks that pose a threat to the achievement of a company's objectives. Number two, BOJ has a robust risk management framework in place. This is an important tool to support BOJ's mandate of maintaining price and financial stability. Number three, risk management is important for individuals and companies alike, especially with increased digitalization in the financial services sector. Number four, BOJ is part of several global networks of corporate risk professionals who routinely exchange views, intelligence, and perspectives on prevailing and emerging risks. And number five, in recognition of the importance of risk management, BOJ has invested in information technology to help improve the effectiveness of risk management at the bank. This is an important step in our journey to become the world's leading central bank. And that's it for our Fast Facts. Man, can you believe it? Sure done already, you know. That's it. For another program in the series, Centrally Speaking, follow Bank of Jamaica at Central Bank JA or follow us on Facebook, Bank of Jamaica, or check out the YouTube channel. You can also visit the website at boj.org.jm. We also invite you to send in your questions on Twitter or Facebook. And of course, watch Centrally Speaking again next week, same time right here on your station. Not watching Centrally Speaking is a red, red flag. flag. <laughs> I'm Sheena. And I'm Anna. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Essentially Speaking is a production of Bank of Jamaica.